Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Now, today is the 20th Sunday of the year, and we're celebrating in the Diocese of Superior today because at 4 o'clock this afternoon, here in the cathedral, four men will be ordained by Bishop Powers to the permanent diaconate. And so you might see there's, for those of you here in church, there's tape everywhere where we've got marked out all the different things and places where people will be, and we're all excited to get that celebration underway. That will be live streamed, so those of you who wish to see it from at home can do so. I'm going to be asking people to keep those four men in your prayers, though, and we're looking forward to celebrating with them. The readings are very interesting this week, but I invite you in a very special way to listen to the second reading that Ro will share with us today. It's from the letter of the Hebrews, and in that letter we get this incredible image to help us understand what we are about as disciples of the Lord. Listen to that image because I'll be talking about it in the homily today. Now please stand, greet those around you. Let's get ready to pray. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We pray with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, He is in your power, for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Melchiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ibn Melikek, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, my lord and king, these men have been at fault in all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. 
Then the king ordered Ebed Melchiah the Cushite to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire. How I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I love watching movies, and a movie that I grew up with as a kid, made back in the 80s, called Chariots of Fire, is one that I continue to go back to. I I love the story. Set right after World War I, it follows the passage of some athletes who are preparing for the Olympics. That year will be celebrated in France. And it talks about their personal stories and what drives them and how they are fueled with this desire to compete in the Olympics. I love it. I, I will rewatch it. I enjoy it. And there's a scene at the Olympics where all of these track and field competitions, especially the races, as the athletes are running, their classmates, colleagues, teammates are in the stands, along with all of the other spectators, to cheer them on. And you have this image where they're running the race and they're being cheered on from the crowd. And then a day or two goes by, different event, different competition, the guys who are cheering in the crowd are now running the races. And their teammates are cheering for them. It's this image in track and field of the race being run and the crowd above cheering them to new heights of excellence that is used here in our image for Hebrews to talk about our race, our journey. Now, for those of you here in Cathedral, we have a a visual, I have like a prop It's the church. So those of you on this side, look up there. And those of you on that side, look up there. Look at those windows. Look at that great cloud of witnesses. We have this magnificent stained glass in the cathedral. But oftentimes you get a crick in your neck trying to see it. That group is just a small fraction of the great cloud of witnesses who cheer us on as we run the race called life and as we face the obstacles, as we face the the hard stitch in the side, the gasping for breath, the moments when we don't think we've got anything left in the tank. They're cheering us on. And get this, the reason why they're cheering us on is because they've already run their race. They know what it's like. Men and women, young and old, rich and poor, They know all the different backgrounds and vocations and situations that life can throw at us. They've been there. They've done that. They've crossed the line. And while they ran their race, now they are cheering for all of us to run ours. I love the image that that track and field displays because it speaks to us on two levels, two crucial levels. When we're competing... And when we're cheering, when we're athletes on the field and we're members of the crowd in the stands. See, we need both in our spiritual journey to make it through this life. Let's take that apart. First, all of us have a race to run. All of us have an appointed task. All of us have work to do. And all of us have been called into this world and set upon that race so that we carry out with our eyes fixed on Jesus. Do the task that needs to be done. Live the life that is set before us. Take the gifts that we've been given and live them. This is not for the faint of heart. 
This is a competition, a great contest. Only we're not competing against each other. We're competing to get to that finish line. And for some, we might be just starting out. For others, we might think we're getting pretty close. And we don't know what each day brings. Here's what we know. That every day will demand of us the very best we have. That every day will challenge us to dig deep. To say, this is a gift I've been given. I will not waste it. This is a treasure I have been entrusted with. I will not squander it. That we live this life with a passion and an intensity. A recognition that it is precious and sacred and holy. And we're going to need help. We keep our eyes fixed on the Lord for a reason. It's going to take every scrap of energy and ingenuity we have. We're called to live it. We're called to put it into practice. We're called to run with all our heart. That's what it means to be on the field, running the race. But then there's the other part. We're also in the stand. That every one of us is uniquely positioned in the lives of others. Every one of us has people, family, friends, neighbors, colleagues, co-workers, classmates. And we can either build them up or we're tearing them down. But if we're going to recognize the great cloud of witnesses, then we recognize that we're part of that group that we aspire to at one day in heaven. But while we are here on earth, we've got work to do to cheer on the people around us, to celebrate their victories and console them in their sorrows. For remember, friends, a grief that is shared is half the grief, but a joy that is shared is double the joy. And that when we lean on each other and support each other and encourage each other, when we, from the top of our lungs, celebrate the victories that our friends and family members are carrying out, we build each other up. And we're part of that encouragement, a communion that we are a part of. One day we aspire to be part of the communion of saints. And so we're practicing here on earth by recognizing to my brothers and sisters, my neighbors, my friends, we're in this together. We need each other. And we're invited to help and support and encourage whenever possible. So let's make this real. What's the race that you have today? What's the challenge? You know, through the course of life, the race can change. The, the competition changes. It demands different things from us. And it's supposed to because that draws us out. It helps us grow. But friends, what today are we facing in the race of life? What is it that we have to deal with? What is it that's right in front of us? Okay, that's the competition for today. We've got to name it. We've got to set it before the altar. We've got to get down on our knees and pray about that. Our eyes fixed on Jesus. And we look to Jesus for the help we need for today's work, that we can put one foot in front of the other. We just gotta name what it is. We've gotta name the particular competition we're dealing with today. That's what we pray about. That's what we ask for help with. But second, how can we call forth for the people around us to celebrate, to encourage, to support? We're all positioned in unique ways with people around us. How do we take the time to rejoice with them, to encourage them, to console them, to help them? How can we, with a word that we are uniquely positioned to say, build up the people around us right here, right now? What's going on in our lives? What's going on in the lives of those around us? Perhaps today, as we prepare to receive our communion, to think about the people that God has placed before us, that we can make a difference to cheer them on, to name them, to pray for them, and then pray for the wisdom by what we can say or do to encourage them to take the next step, encourage them to continue on in the competition, to fight the good fight. We all are positioned to be able to make a difference in the lives of others. We're all part of that great cloud of witnesses. Folks, today as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, we turn to the Lord with full hearts. We recognize the gift we've been given. We run with everything we've got and encourage those around us every step of the way.
God bless you all. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. It's from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pause this day to offer our prayers for our needs and the needs of the church. That the church will continue to be the voice of truth, mercy, and the love of Jesus. Teaching the fullness of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. For those in leadership, that they will imitate the goodness of the Lord, who secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed, we pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and to consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. For the elderly, that God will help them in their needs and be always close to them in his love, we pray to the Lord. That our parish may grow in holiness through the grace of the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to have hearts on fire with the love of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. That the Holy Spirit will guide the preparations for the World Synod, we pray to the Lord. For an end to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. For the intention of this Mass, the spiritual and temporal welfare of our cathedral family, we pray to the Lord. For all of you at home, for the prayers you offer in the comment line, and for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith, Remember, Lord, now your servants, especially those among the living, for whom we now pray. Remember all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended, by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, those who have died, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and useless worry. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I have some announcements. At the conclusion of Mass after the postlude today, I will be down here for those who wish to receive the anointing of the sick. Again, we do that every month, and so those who would like to receive the anointing, please feel free just to wait for me up here at, at the end of Mass. We will have two Alpha courses starting up in September, one here at the Cathedral and one out at St. Anthony in Lake Nabagaman. Starting next week, you'll see information in the bulletin about those courses and about how people can sign up and register. Uh, but again, they'll run in September, October, and November, get done right before Thanksgiving. An Alpha course happens once a week uh, for those 11 weeks. And then for those who would like, we start RCIA, the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, after Thanksgiving, and that will run till Easter. For those who are looking to either learn more about the church, want to maybe get a refresher, or want to join the church, and are looking at how to acquire the knowledge they need for those sacraments. Mark your calendars for September 11th. That's a Sunday, and that will be the St. William's Annual Ham and Meat Loaf Dinner. A great day, a beautiful, beautiful harvest dinner, and certainly want to invite people just to mark that on the calendars now. Cathedral School it has still some room if people are looking for enrollment for their students. They can contact the office. Just call the office for information about enrollment. There are also a few positions left. They're looking for some aides, I believe, to fill. So if you're looking for uh, employment opportunities, call the school. That changes day by day as we get closer to the end of this month. Check the bulletin out for the daily Mass and Eucharistic Adoration schedules. We're continuing to invite people to come to daily Mass. We're inviting people to take time before the Blessed Sacrament for Adoration. This Wednesday is the summer recital number three that we'll be doing. It starts at 12.15 here in the cathedral. A half an hour of beautiful music. It's a free will offering. You're welcome to attend and certainly enjoy the music and the opportunity just to have a little break in the middle of the week. I also want to just make a diocesan pitch on August 5th, uh, excuse me, on August 17th uh, in Medford is one of our diocesan St. Andrew dinners. These are dinners, it's a little prayer, discussion, a nice meal for men who are discerning and open to a vocation to the priesthood. Ideally for high school and college age men, that we've been running it in the bulletin, but I just wanted to call that out and gratitude for those on our diocesan vocations committee who make those dinners possible for young men to learn a little bit more about the vocation to the priesthood. Tomorrow, August 15th, is the feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Normally that'd be a day of a holy day of obligation. But when it falls on a Saturday or a Monday, it is suppressed. But we are gonna have Mass at Holy Assumption because it's their feast day. That will be tomorrow. It'll be the daily Mass. You can check the bulletin for those details. The prayer for the World Synod. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. But let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. There are no funeral announcements this week. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.